What is up GOAT world? It is me, your boy JDZ, and I'm back at you again with another GOAT format video. Yesterday was a dramatic conclusion of the 33rd Format Library Championship, and today I'm going to bring you the top 16 deck profiles from that event. Usually I'll do the top 8, but I think this is a larger tournament, so I'm going to go ahead and do the top 16 because there were some cool things that happened. First and foremost, I want to say a huge congratulations to everyone who topped this event, and I would like to say thank you and a huge shout out to everyone on the Format Library staff for executing a perfectly ran tournament. And with that, Go ahead and like and subscribe as we're hopping on in to the top 16 decks. Coming on in at number 16 is going to be Canadian West, Handsome West, playing Chaos Turbo. And a lot of these decks, if it's very standard, I'm just going to kind of briefly go over them, try to introduce a player, and then we're going to keep it moving. So this deck is pretty standard Chaos Turbo. You do have the main deck, Mind Control. You are playing Triple Kaiku in the side deck. Everything else seems pretty standard. You know, Soccer Rescue Armor, Kinetic Soldier coming back. Very 519, very Safari Zone tech coming in this Chaos Turbo deck. Congratulations to you, West, for a top 16 finish you're quite handsome you're quite handsome and another top 16 deck we have the big splev coming out playing the warrior strategy usually splev is going to be playing go control usually splev is going to be playing return but splev elects to load up the warriors for this and made a deep run looks very similar to the deck that moxies has been playing having success with you got the main faith you're up to 13 or excuse me you're up to 14 monsters but still looking pretty standard looking pretty regular side deck looks quite good as well the spies you got the one mobius and you have the dust and the zing decks looking good huge shout out to you splev for your 16th place finish. Moving on to Scrub for Life. Scrub for Life, again, with very similar warrior deck that you just saw from Splev, but you just had a, had a few changes in your side deck. You changed a couple cards around. You changed a few things around. What does this mean for the Warriors? Maybe they're back. I mean, the Warrior players are returning, Lucas and Moxies, and they're kind of showing the ropes of what, they're kind of showing the way of what the Warrior decks need to look like, LeBounty, etc., and all the top tier Warrior players. They're kind of giving you some ideas of what you need to build on, and these Jar Greeds might be the future. Triple Dust Shoot, Dust Tornado in the main deck. Faith is basically a staple at this point shout out to you scrub for life congratulations on your 16th place finish as well and loading the warrior deck coming in at another top 16 finish we have the italian duelist pot the master he day two the goat format world championship last year and he's playing this very interesting chaos turbo deck and i really wanted to showcase this deck specifically because it is chaos turbo but you are main decking the book of moon and you're main decking triple copies of desert sunlight you see this and it just jumps right out because desert sunlight has some really cool artwork but the card is actually quite good um, uh, it is a neg one inherently you're not playing any morphin jar any cyber jar to go along with it you're just maxing out the magician of faith maxing out the gk spy you have the decoy you have the night assailant desert sunlight can generate some really interesting game states especially if you look at the meta right now main deck mind control is a thing that is happening the warriors are playing missy swords level two all over the place that is something that is happening you know people are coming after those set monsters very aggressively with regeki breaks chaining regeki breaks and whatnot and in phase and standby phase whatever and now you have desert sunlight a way to sneak those flip effects and activate them before those cards can get destroyed so i think this might be a sleeper card in the meta i i fully expect now that it has had some type of finish that maybe more players might start to experiment with a card like desert sunlight and it could be a way to kind of make the chaos turbo deck even stronger or maybe hedge in those really really intense mirror type situation when people are going to be main deck and mind, co mind control against you in the side deck seems pretty standard you have the one metamorphosis well that's not really standard you usually want to play two but you're going to go one swap one meta two goats some buyers soccer to armor standard stuff but huge shout out to you very cool tech coming in at the top 16 for pot the master hope this duelist is playing online a little bit more okay coming on continuing the top 16 we have oops of clap we have oops of cow playing a this one we're going to call quintessential thunderclap when everyone asks what's thunderclap why do you call it thunderclap what is thunderclap it's basically a deck like this essentially it's like a flip warrior but not really because you're not playing that many flips it's really not a warrior because you're not playing that many warriors but also you have the ability to set and also aggress you know you can play Zaborg that's where the thunder comes from and the clap from comes from your life points being depleted when this deck is taking you out I still believe that this deck is very very good in GOAT format it does not seek as much it does not get as much play as it did when it first hit the scene but it's still a very viable strategy in GOAT format because it still will be able to confuse and befuddle your opponent if you're new to GOAT format you want to just try a different deck and just try out something that really kind of allows you to play a lot of different things at once to kind of speed up your time when testing maybe try a deck like this because you can still get some of the benefits of setting you can still get some of the benefits of attacking and aggressing by playing cards like reinforcement army and you still get an ability to kind of play almost a pseudo mid-range i hate using that term but like a pseudo mid-range kind of game in goat format you're still able to play solemn judgments and the trap does shoots but you still have the magician faith and main deck gk spy and here is that uh main deck 
mind control that I was talking about with the main deck, Mystic Storm level two. So maybe this duel's got paired up with all that desert sunlight. It might not have worked out, but still, I think this deck is super strong. In the side deck, you have the Chaos Sorcerer. You have another smashing ground, one smashing main, one smashing side it. Smashing stock is exploding. So that might be another card you might want to consider playing if you're having a lot of trouble in this game. Smashing ground is going to be a good one. So huge shout out to you, Usuf Cal, for your top 16 place, and thanks for playing a really cool deck. Okay, moving on to another top 16 deck. We have Mad Cap. Mad Cap is kind of taking the role, the mantle, if you will, as the frontline Panda Burn main, as Mad Cap has made another top performance playing the Panda Burn strategy. He's got the double Big Shield Garden, the triple Gakugire Panda, the single textbook standard protector of the sanctuary you have the one koala no no giant rats none of that kind of stuff just straight up panda koala big shield gardener protector of the sanctuary we're going to use the uh level limit area b which is going to be your primary floodgate you're not having any gravity binds any stuff like that just got the nightmare wheels two of them the main deck my body as a shield which is some interesting tech you have the main deck shield and sword which is also some interesting tech which can come up in a pinch big shield gardener if you didn't know has 2600 defense big shield and sword that can be a sneaky outside game shot right there sometimes you have the gakugire panda which has 1600 defense shield and sword there you have have the Dez Koala Shield and Sword there. So you have opportunities to play that card and just set yourself up for a sneaky game shot. Shield and Sword with the Injection Fairy Lily is also very interesting for those direct attacks if you can get it in. It's going to switch everyone, so it will be able to set up some OT, some outside OTK sometimes, so I think that's a very sneaky tech. The Single Solemn Judgment is hilarious when you look at it that way, and you also are going to be playing that Desert Sun. So that's two decks in the top 16, main decking some copies of Desert Sunlight, meaning that there is something there that can be built upon if you uh, continue to develop that type of car in these types of strategies uh going on to the side deck seems pretty standard you have the single big bang shot in there which is interesting and the united we stand is going to make its way into the side deck as well very sleeper card very underrated card and the one copy of threatening roar so you are able to protect yourself against the reason to get stuff and you're not going to be able to have those excuses when you don't win against it because you have threatening roar is going to be in there cool deck i like burn i'm in on burn i'm buying my burn stock i think burn stock is still super duper low but i think it could be another meta contending threat that will cause people to play differently and build their decks differently okay continuing on with the top 16 we have grumple still skin playing a very very standard chaos turbo deck extremely regular nothing to write home about you do have that tech in needle ceiling right here is going to make up your 15 card in the side deck everything else super standard super regular congratulations on your top 16 finish grumple still skin moving on to geronimo 7 as a top 16 player again same thing very standard card destructions in the main deck super standard main deck nothing to write home about very standard side deck mobius and the damn spirit reaper with another shoot going to be the side deck everything else seems super standard congratulations on your top 16 geronimo number seven and now we're making it into the top eight so we are here at the top eight with sdl killer back at it again back on the warrior strategy trying to get the get out of the slump and sdl kill is going to be playing the warrior strategy in a very unique way as well. well not very unique but definitely a little bit more unique you're going double mystic storm level two you're going double book of moon you're going double triple kaiku you're back on triple kaiku dueling and you're playing one copy of ninja grand master he calls his deck mystic 55 or whatnot and you got double book of moon dueling in the main deck with triple saku triple trap does shoot triple solemn judgment this i think this deck is ready to get after those set monsters this is why you're playing triple desert sunlight i believe you got double mystic storm level two in your main deck as we're going to look into the side deck you have triple royal decree which i'm sure that absolutely shocked and amazed some people you just don't see it coming maybe it's going to be a tech to go against all the soccer armors that you know are coming your way it's probably great in the mirror and it's going to be a super surprise factor the issue is in the top 16 of this event and day two of this event there is open deck list so you're going to lose that surprise factor as you go in but i'm sure day one no one would see that thing coming and you can just get behind that royal decree with all your blade nights and all your attacking guys and just absolutely get straight downhill right away straight to the point in games two three turns in and it'll just be jammed up so i think that is uh, that's a pretty cool tech as you got double mobius you have double spy and you're going to have the tribe is going to find his way to sign deck maybe there's a way to jam that tribe into the main deck but i think you're good enough and you don't really need it and the go control strategies have not been as prevalent as they typically are but huge shout out to sdl man come on back in and maybe you can get the rust out of your out of your system and become a major champion again soon but i like to see sdl back here in the top cut and maybe he'll continue to demonstrate his dueling prowess as we hop on to continue on to 
the top eight. We have Alvarado again, no stranger to topping these events. Uh, they made a mistake by letting Alvarado into the top cut of this tournament because he had a very good chance to win this thing. He was tripped up in the top eight by our eventual winner, but still he's going to be here as another top eight finish. And he's playing very standard chaos turbo deck as well. Triple shoot trap Trinity. Double Regeki Break, just straight up regular. We have Card Destruction main deck, double uh, Upstar Goblin. Main deck Kaiku is the tech here. Side deck, you're going to keep it straight up, up and down as well. You have Triple uh, Scapegoats, which is probably a good call for all the reasons that's floating around. And you're going to have the double Metamorphosis and the double Mind Control. It's going to make up the side deck with the Triple Zombira and the double Kinetic Soldier. Deck's looking cool. And you also had the wherewithal to bring a Royal Decree into this thing as well to try to make a good call for some of the high trap density decks that are going to be present in these types of open fields so i think that's a good call i think it's a solid deck and shout out to alvarado for making it to the top eight okay moving on continuing on with the top eight we have hnvd playing very standard very regular very normal chaos turbo deck got the jar get goat swap one swap double mind you have the one regeki break and you have double solemn and double zombie is gonna make up the side deck so huge congratulations to you hnvd for making it all the way to the top eight with this very standard chaos turbo deck love to see it keep playing i would like to see you get on into the goat format world championship so let's go ahead to continue on with the top eight you have my good friend and homie crash vote and man oh man i know this dude i know how bad this duel is wants it man i know how close he got to it just some terrible terrible pair ups man some terrible matchings and it's going to end up with you being in this position as you are sitting here with the mask of darkness Sukiyomi turbo deck mask darkness turbo as you got double jar as well double regeki break triple solemn and that tech one return from the different dimension as i stated before in the previous uh when i was talking about sdl killers deck in the road decrees this is a surprise factor typically this card is not played in this deck but just having it in there and just blasting it on somebody when they never see it coming is kind of the way you're going to have to get ahead and go format right now with everything being so rigid as it is. But day two, when your deck's exposed, you're going to have to give up your secrets and it's going to be available. But still, I think it's a pretty cool tech. This deck is nice because you can loop the uh, loop the Master Darkness and continue to get those things back, continue to lock your opponent out of the game. And it's a solid, it's a solid, solid deck. But it's not very good against the damn Lockdown Burn deck. It is a good deck and I... I like the duels that plays it, and I know how hard he's been working, how, 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 how bad he wants to go ahead and get one of these major wins, but it is what it is. As you got very low spell and trap, very low spell count, lots of traps to support your Mask of Darkness, and the deck is super solid. But huge shout out to you, Crash Folk, man. Keep playing, dude. That's all I can say, man. I know I feel bad, but just, just keep playing, and eventually you'll get there sooner or later as we're going to continue on to the top four now so this is the top four this duelist is literally in fourth place because there was a playoff to get to the goat format world championship as you know we're going to give invites for one for every 32 this duelist was that fourth duelist out so he's going to be the, the last person that didn't get an invite and he's going to be playing this really cool chaos warrior deck i like this deck a lot too i i personally am a fan of this deck a fan of this strategy a fan of this idea i know a lot of people really don't like it they think it's a kind of they think it's kind of a fickle. It's, it doesn't have enough, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have a, a strong enough identity. You can't really set, you can't, you know, attack as much as you would like. But I still think the deck is very, very good because it can still, like decks that can play reinforcements of the army and Chaos Sorcerer, I think there's a place in this game for a deck like that. I don't know what that deck completely looks like. Maybe it looks like this, as it has the Solemn Judgments, as Trap Does Shoot, as Jar of Greed, it has, re it has the, um, Regeki, the single copy of Regeki Break, but you're able to play BLS, Chaos Sorcerer, Reinforcing the Army, and some attacking guys. I think that's cool. And you're still able to play Discard Traps too. There's something there. There's gotta be something there. In the side deck, you got the double needle ceiling. I guess you're really not losing the burn. You're really not trying to lose to Reasoning Gate and Scapegoat based strategy because you're gonna go double dip the chip on the needle ceiling. And you got the Lightning Vortex as well with the Magician of Faith. So you can play some flips in the side deck. You have the single copy of Zumbira and you have the single copy of Trap Death Shooting the side. So I think this deck is really rock solid. I've tried this deck a lot myself and I have a good time when I'm playing it and it feels good when I use it. So maybe, uh, maybe there's something there to this deck okay moving on shout out to you, ice phoenix and keep playing you were so close to getting to the worlds but it just didn't work out this time maybe it'll work out next time as moving on to top three coming in third place as i mentioned before this is the duelist who defeated ice phoenix for the invite this deck 
this duelist will be in the GOAT format world championship. And this deck right here is one that I really want to spend a little bit of time talking about because a deck like this is terrifying to this metagame. This is the one, something like this could be the reason that for F4 is some type of change. And again, this could be ho me hoping and coping because I don't even think that this deck that you see on your screen right now is completely optimized. I don't think this is a finished product. I think some of the concepts and theories are absolutely rock solid. And this deck is misery incarnate for the meta right now. I think it's super duper strong because you have all of these floodgates. There's not a lot of Royal Decree, as you saw in the top cut of this thing. No one's really main decking Royal Decree. And at best, they're gonna be side decking it at so many, only so many copies that you can play. Well, this deck, the strength of this deck that I believe is that with all these floodgates, you can just overclock your opponent's spell and trap removal. You have more floodgates and you have more ways to stop them from attacking and just hampering their plays than they will be able to heavy storm breaker, MST, dust tornado, regeki break. They just don't play enough of those cards to get through this. So I think that there's something there to that. And also you have the fake traps and the solemn judgments to negate the few uh, removals that they have. I think it was genius to put the GK spies in here. I think it was genius to put the goblin attack forces in here because those things are very searchable with the tune table of content. And with skill drain up, this thing can also apply pressure, which usually the lockdown burn deck cannot do. So now you have to think about not only I have to be able to remove all their floodgates, you also have to keep some battle traps in because GK Spy can also apply pressure. And Morphing Jar, it can't apply pressure, but it can just trick your opponent to use their spell and trap removal to get this, or use their Nomen Cross outs to go for this thing, but they're gonna be hitting Big Shield Garden and negging themselves. Skill Drain and Big Shield Garden, Chaos Sorcerer can't attack over it. It's gonna be able to wall out everything. This Tune Goblin Attack Force can wall out everything. And then you have Rota to search for you know both of these guys along with the Tune Table of Contents. So you're always going to have a guy at some point and then you just sit back, set up these really, really disgustingly sticky game states. And it's just so frustrating where you're just sitting there waiting for a heavy storm, waiting for a heavy storm. It'll never come. You're waiting for an MST. You're waiting for all these things and you just sit there as gain cards, gain cards, gain cards, secret barrels getting bigger and bigger and bigger, just desserts getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then boom, the game is just over. So a deck like this, eventually, if they keep having success, you're going to have to force people to put more cards into their deck to counter what this deck is doing. Same thing with the side deck. I think the side deck still, I didn't get a chance to see those morphing jars, but we're assuming that those are going to be for reasoning gate, maybe for the mirror, maybe for some burn strategies can put morphing jar in there just to kind of force like a deck out type thing clear the board you have those wave motion cannons though because even those could even find their way into the main deck honestly because they're just another card that you're gonna that's gonna absorb some type of spell trap removal uh we did see some of the weaknesses of this deck when it's not getting all the pieces needed to establish that lock effectively it just it's very feeble if you're drawing a bunch of fake traps and a bunch of you know mons and you're bought to tune you're just going to get beat down so fast before you get a chance to set up but once this deck is set up and you got that lock established it's very very hard to get out of it man and it is just so 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 taxing so huge shout out to gulas for coming in playing this deck again keep your head up don't let anybody neg you too bad i'm a big burn supporter now especially in these tournaments because we need this meta game to be shaken up and we need people to start playing some different cards and a deck like this will force people to do that eventually but huge shout out to you and congratulations on your third place finish and your invitation to the goat format world championship coming in at second place we have perennial all-star jean-claude van damme playing a very John claude Van Damme-esque goat control deck. He changed up the ratios a little bit. He changed up some of the text a little bit, but the deck is still very quintessential John claude Van Damme, as now he will be going to the Goldfriend World Championship again, uh, probably playing a deck very similar to this one. Looking at the monster lineup, the changes that you'll notice, I think he has double the Koichi in there. I think he goes from single to double, and now he's gonna play a single copy of Missy Tomato. We saw that thing going to great effects as it's able to search for Sangin, set up your serpent, search for reaper get some rips in support creature swap i think it's a good tech I, I don't really know how good it is at just one copy per deck but having it at one just having a guy who can just press down for 14 bump coconuts with the koichi clear tech from just gk spies being tributed for mobius or excuse me being tributed for zaborg i think it is really cool also being able to tribute for demok sometimes in a pinch is great demok sleeper in this deck it goes so so hard in this deck i think he plays it very well he knows how to use this deck in and out. If you use this deck, just know it's very difficult. It's not something that you can just pick up and just go. You have to really, really have a lot of forethought and think, um, think 
a couple turns ahead when you're playing this deck it is not the easiest deck to use we're all going to be at two meta two goats in the main deck probably to prevent bricking and whatnot uh with the creature swap as well and we just all the way down to one copy of jar Greed, double trap dust shoot double solemn judgment in the side deck you're also playing royal decree which is great especially for the previous deck that we saw you're also able to play a second creature swap mind control rota Rota is a good card because you're able to toolbox your deck, get a couple different things. And when you bring in that Exile Force, when you bring in that Blade Knight, I think Rota is going to be a no brainer. And another card that Duelist is playing very well is going to be that Morphing Jar. If you guys go back and watch the stream, it was probably one of the greatest matches that I've seen, especially in a grand finals. We had John Claw Van Damme versus your eventual winner, and they were going at it. And it was some really cool plays that you can make with these jars and creature swaps and stuff. And it just was not enough to get over the hump. But John Claw Van Damme, huge fan favorite. Everyone likes what he's doing. Everyone wants to see him continue to press on with his Go Control because he is one of the last frontline Go Controllers that is keeping this deck viable in our our game but that takes nothing away from him or taking nothing away from john claw van damme our eventual winner and first place format library champion 33 is going to be danny cassie danny cassie showed up showed out played very very well all day long and he negotiated all the necessary obstacles to make it to the promised land of where he wants to be and now he is a title champion as format library champion and looking at the deck obviously it's going to be chaos turbo it seems very standard but you did change it up a little bit you are the only chaos turbo player from what i understand looking at the top 16 chaos turbo players there were eight i believe you're the only one that main deck solemn judgment and that probably paid some dividends for you no crash vote also main deck three solemn judgment but you got two in there no mass darkness anything like that just standard uh monster lineup uh standard spell and trap lineup but you're going to be main decking the mystical space typhoon which a lot of duelists have stopped doing as well so you went back to the roots a little bit kept it very very standard played all the good cards you needed and it all seemed to work out and you were playing playing very well so uh in the side deck seems very standard as well you're going to go to the chaos control side again goats and meta very italian type situation we got the uh, mind control is going to be in the side deck you have the kaiko to go destroy just one copy of zombire the dark is going to be in the side deck double walk one book of moon keeping the book of moon in the side deck bringing it in and this thing was going absolutely crazy saving his life in multiple situations i think book of moon i'm sure if you had to ask this dude is he gonna say book of moon i gotta keep it with me it's my new thing because it think this this that book of moon is probably the card that won him this tournament i would say just based on some of the matches that we've seen in the stream that thing came up so huge so many times and it is it is a card that people should continue to play as you got one copy of trap that shoes going to be inside along with two sakuretsu armors so again very solid chaos turbo deck very regular chaos turbo deck at the end of the day as i always say it's not about the deck it's about the players and the plays that you make so here are the top 16 decks what do you think this means for for the meta game i think the meta does have some vulnerabilities that is being demonstrated i think decks like panda burn or a decks like lockdown burn decks like reasoning gate all these alt wins are starting to find a home in goat format because there are some serious holes and valleys that are left exploited in goat format but duelist make sure as always you get into the comment section and tell me what you think about the top 16 decks and as always this event is fully live stream get over there and check it out send a comment over there too well that's all i have duelist as always i'm jdz i play ghosts until the next time shout out to all the real ones salute to the ogs peace